All right, that's a, that's a lot of pressure. Closing keynote, that's what they told me. So uh, if we get the first slide up. So my name is Paul Murphy. I'm the co-founder and CEO of uh, a company called Dots. Um, for those that don't know Dots or haven't heard of the studio before, we're uh, a pretty small team as well, uh, based in New York City. There's about 25 of us now. Uh, we've made two games so far. Um, and those two games have reached about 40 million people. Um, a lot of that growth has happened just in the last few months. Um, these are the two games. So the game on the left is, uh, is Dots. It's my co-founder's creation, uh, inspired by a Japanese artist, Kusama. Uh, we then took the mechanics of Dots and we uh, built out Two Dots, which uses the same effective uh, game board. So you connect the dots and the square is the power move. There's obstacles that you can try to achieve in the game, and then there's a level progression. So the topic that I thought I would talk about and be groundbreaking with is the benefits of building a brand first game studio. Um, but Andrew and Petri just explained everything I was going to talk about uh, much better than I could. Uh, but I do have a few, a few kind of unique points uh, on this topic. I think the first is sort of along the lines of what the Seriously team was, was discussing. The mobile industry, the mobile gaming industry has obviously grown very quickly. That's not news to anyone in this room. Uh, 24, 25 billion dollars this year, and it's set to grow much more in the coming years. And I think similar to the, the previous speakers, we actually do feel that right now it's sort of like the 1940s, 1950s, and the television has become ubiquitous. Uh, only replace the TV with the mobile phone, and instead of Hollywood, it's mobile gaming companies. And so we do feel like there's an opportunity for several winners to build these sort of mega studios really rooted in mobile gaming. So if you believe that is a possible outcome, then the question that we ask ourselves at Dots is how can we be one of those winners? And so what we've done is sort of decomposed uh, what we think makes up a valuable brand, a valuable studio, and there's sort of four key tenets. Uh, the first is earnings, so the ability to produce revenue profitably, makes sense. Uh, a really good creative process, so how can you continue to produce hit after hit? Uh, how can you build an audience? That's not news to anyone here. And then, more importantly, retain that audience after you build it. I think the thing that is actually often not discussed very much in our industry is the brand. And if you look at the sort of largest companies that are out there, brand is anywhere from 20 to 40 percent of the overall enterprise value. And so I think that this sort of taking these first three are really important. You can have a wildly profitable company. But I think when you layer in that last component of a brand, that's where you can start to build you know, the next Disney or the next Pixar. So before even going into the details, uh, the first thing to sort of realize, and this is crazy when you think about it, but um, we're all building global brands already. I mean, we're 25 people. Uh, we've got 40 million downloads of our games. Uh, half of that is outside the US. Many more people are talking about the game on social or an actual conversation. Uh, our marketing team reaches hundreds of millions of people. And so you know, your brand's getting out there at an incredible scale very, very quickly. And so that's already happening. That said, there's all sorts of benefits that I think we can gain from having a brand that we don't have to wait for the long term to, to realize. So there's some short term benefits. Uh, marketing and user acquisition. So from our first game to our second game, uh, we found that the value of actually creating a brand that people start to like um, has actually been beneficial for us in our performance marketing. We fall anywhere from five to 10 times below the market average in terms of what it takes to get uh, to pay for an install. Uh, we've also found that our retention has gone up over time with existing game and then with the new game as well. And then when we monetize the game, when we actually ask people for money, we, it seems like they're more likely to give it to us if they trust our brand, which I think is obviously important because we all want to make money at the end of the day. And the last thing is around defensibility. I think you know, our industry, we're, we're constantly faced with competition in the form of other forms of entertainment. And then you know, an unfortunate byproduct of our industry is there is actually a lot of clones and copycats. And I think you know, having a, a strong brand can actually help protect you from both of those. So when we think about it as a company, as a small company that you know, is, is growing quickly, there's sort of two areas that we feel we can actually incorporate our brand. The first is in our game design, the most important. And then the second is how we actually market the game. And so for our game designers, this is a slide. These sort of four, four things are something that they obsess about when they're 
creating new games. We've got several new games that are under development right now, and we think about these extensively. How can we make sure that our games are actually unique, original IP that we came up with that are not derived from other games, but derived from the arts? Is the design thoughtful? Uh, is it something that just sort of feels like it's high quality, or at least was considered when it came out? Are the things that we're asking people to pay for of high value? So do they feel good after they spend money? And then the last one is sort of aspirational, but you know, can we create this sense of longing? When people put the game down, do they want to come back and play the game later? So we sort of look at these set of features inside and outside of the game, and that's how we want to identify the things that we build. And I think that's really where the brand starts. And I think this slide can look different for different companies. This is just, you know, these are the values that, we've out, uh, that we prioritize as a company uh, for DOTS. In terms of marketing, which is you know, more controllable, obviously you've built the game, you need to get the word out there. Uh, we've got an incredible um, performance marketing engine at DOTS, even though we're a small company. But we do think beyond performance marketing and user acquisition. We think about how we can actually start to build this brand through our community, through the people that we partner with, and then through the things that we actually produce, which are outside of the game, the creative. And so the first one on the community, we actually got uh, an email from a fan, a player of the game. And he, uh, he wanted us to create a custom version of our game so that he could propose to his girlfriend in the game, because she was such a big fan of the game. And the instinct was, let's just kind of get rid of this. Let's send him some stickers or something. But we took a few hours. We, we made a custom build. We sent it back to him. It had a little ring that popped up. And then we filmed it. It cost us, I think, $200 to do. And then it ended up making it on about two dozen uh, sort of TV stations across the country once the word got out that he had used the game to propose to his girlfriend. So very cheap, but also brand building experiment for us as a company. The second is related to collaborations. Who we partner with, who do we lend our brand to, and who lends us their brand? Uh, we've actually done a few of these now, but we've partnered with uh, sort of fashion celebrity photographers. The first one was Nigel Barker, uh, who's on a, a few TV shows you might recognize. Uh, this last one we did was with uh, someone called Russell James, who is the lead photographer for Victoria's Secrets. Um, he actually took over our social media accounts and put up some photos that had not yet been published. This uh, is a photo of uh, Adriana Lima, which is a famous model from Brazil. Um, and when we sort of put it up there right away, we got instant traction. Obviously, we're getting all of these people that are kind of interacting with us in a, in a different way. But it's also, you know, we're, we're riding on the back of someone else's brand, and, and they're benefiting from our audience. And so these collaborations are things that we want to do both in game design and also outside of the game design. And the last is uh, the creative that we actually produce. So we've... Um, like a lot of game companies, we obsess about the sound design that's in our game. Uh, we have two full-time sound designers. There's a studio. They spend. They have all sorts of crazy instruments. Um, you know, they they produce a lot of uh, great sound sound effects. So we actually took the time to package up an album that's on Spotify and Pandora and iTunes. Uh, we sell it, but we don't sell it to make money. It's as cheap as we can actually set it. It's a brand exercise for us. It's a way to let people continue to engage with with our content. Uh, we also have a full-time illustrator. Uh, she creates these animated GIFs and comics that she'll put out on social media, and they're great. Uh, a lot, very funny. You know, people really interact with them. And then we haven't actually um, shown this to anyone yet, so I want to show you guys first. But we just finished an animation. It's a short animation, a minute and a half. And what it does is it tells the backstory of two of the characters that are in the game, Jack and Emily, uh, the game Two Dots. So I'm going to go ahead and let that play.
Thank you.